thing from, I want to prove it to my parents, or I truly believe in this, whatever. You have to have some compelling reason to do it. When you go to med school, it's really nice to go home and tell mom and dad and grandparents at Thanksgiving dinner, I've just got accepted to med school. And grandma and grandpa and mom and dad are thinking, this is great. I'll be supported in my later years in life by this med student daughter or son. Anything is very exciting at the start. But then you hit the obstacle. And in med school, it's organic chemistry. I know something about that. Thank you. I know something about that because I know something about that because beer is organic organic chemistry. Beer is life science. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen. Throw a little sulfur in there. It's a mind-numbing course. It exists because the medical profession doesn't want 200,000 people graduating from medical school. So you get into medical school, it's all very exciting, you're learning about anatomy and where your liver is and how it's affected by alcohol and where your spleen is and all that sort of stuff. And then you hit organic chemistry and then a lot of people quit. Not because they're not smart enough, not because they came from the wrong family. I came from immigrant parents. I was the first guy to go to college in my family. They came from Russia and Italy. But I've been drinking beer since I was age five. And I love you. <laughs> my grandparents still thought that water was unsafe. So, uh, so that's when people quit. So you have to, in life, is that series of dips. You get to the point in a career, in a company, in the brewing business. I have 53 liquor licenses. We ship here to 33 states and 20 countries. We have wholesalers to go through. I've got liquor laws. I've got distribution issues. You have to be passionate about this. So that's when quitting is smart. What most people do is they quit at exactly the wrong time. They quit just as it gets hard. They quit on day two of snowboarding, as opposed to never starting or seeing it through. That's why you have to give some thought to what you, what, what you want to put your passion into. The second thing about quitting, and this is going to sound different from people that have spoken before me, and I'm sure will speak after me, is there's got to be some imbalance here. So if you're in law school, almost anybody can become president of the law review or a Supreme Court clerk. But you have to quit everything else in life. I, tr I unplugged my cable TV three years ago the first day of spring, three years ago in May, because I did not have the self-discipline every time I walked past the law and order, even though I'd seen it ten times and could repeat the dialogue over, I knew what they were going to say. This is a good one. And I look at my watch, there's 15 minutes as I was knowing every word that's coming out. I like to show. I didn't have the self-discipline to do that. I unplugged the cable, wrap it around there, called Comcast, and pick it up. So if you are willing to quit the stuff that distracts you from what you want to pursue, you will be successful. You have to obsess. There is no shortcut to hard, focused work. Because I can tell you, whatever industry you're in, if I'm not thinking about the beer industry, the brewing industry, the styles of beer, our wholesaler relationships, the scarcity of connecting with people every day, somebody else in my business is, and they're going to leapfrog us. We doubled our business in the last three years since I came to Frederick. That's an extraordinary achievement when there's 1,800 breweries in America, 800 under construction, move up in the rankings by three. Our increases out here where I focus our efforts were up 300%. That just doesn't happen no matter how good our beer is. And our beer is good. It was rated number one by the New York Times, best pale in America, Raging Bitch was rated best, one of the top ten beers in America, it's our number one seller last year. But somebody out there is thinking about this. So you have to really, really think about what you're willing to put your heart and soul into and what you're willing to, to quit to do that. And don't quit when it going gets tough. Quit thoughtfully and plan it out. The second thing is fear and resistance. What happens in life is we don't believe in ourselves. And I don't want to get too much into this, but there's two parts to your brain. There's this part of the back. It's pretty small. It's been around for 100,000 years. It's called the amygdala. It's the lizard brain. And I don't want to get too much into evolutionary biology, but if you believe in this sort of stuff, there's a part of your brain that deals with fear and self-defense and the flight or fight reaction. It's meant to protect you. Because back in the days before there were civilizations, uh, it was very unsafe to not be a member of the tribe. To stand out of the tribe and to be expelled from or to be expelled from it, you were eaten by saber-toothed tigers. This is the real deal. That part of your brain kicks in even when you're asked to speak to a wonderful group of students at the Towson University. There's some fear there protecting you. Well, what if I, what if I stutter? What if I just freeze? And that part of your brain isn't reacting to reality. It's an ancient part of your brain that makes you pull back and conform. Again, the enemy of being truly remarkable in life 
and truly courageous and bold and standing up for what you believe in is not being a coward, it's being, it's fitting in. The whole world, including your friends and family, want you to fit in. They don't want you to be different. So that part of your brain kicks in. The prefrontal cortex is the rational part of your brain. It's the part of your brain that's saying to me, while the back part is saying, what if I hugely embarrass myself here? The front part is saying, well, what's the worst that can happen? They don't invite me back? <laughs> okay. They might still like the beer, but they're going, I don't know how this guy does it. He's a complete schmo, but somehow the beer is there. There is absolutely no rational fear to that. You should have a rational fear of riding your motorcycle on a busy highway, but there is no rational fear for most of the things that will hold you back in life from being great. So that resistance, and that resistance is going to be there, I don't care what you do, whether it's that career you're pursuing, whether it's getting into shape, whether it's going out there and writing that book you always want, whether it's writing a blog, if all of you don't have a blog, start one tomorrow. Start writing five <coughs> sentences a day. You have to start concentrating your thoughts. You have to start writing down what's important to you. It doesn't matter if anybody reads that. You have to clarify your thinking, and a blog is a great way to do that, and it expresses your idea. If you want to read some of my musings, and I don't post often enough, I get criticized for it, it's cuttheleashblog.com. And you can see I speak on a wide range of things from the Fourth Amendment to, um, it sucked. Uh, you can get that one up yourself, it's about Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones. And he didn't suck, but something else did. Uh, so, so that fear and resistance will always hold you back. It's there, it's real. Henry Fonda, up till age 72, still puked before he got out on the stage every time. That fear is always with you, just like it is with every warrior, every person in the army. Then you have to put that fear aside and go forward and the whole world changes. And you have to keep in mind that no matter what you're going into, there's tremendous competition. Nobody goes into a bar in Baltimore or Frederick, Maryland or D.C. and says, hey, what's the third most popular craft beer around town? Nobody cares. Nobody cares what the second most popular craft beer is. What they go and say, what's the best local beer you have here? And if we're not doing things to keep energy around the brand and keep those styles interesting and do things like Raging Bitch, which was a big deal, uh, that's kind of an edgy name, um, then we wouldn't be here. And as somebody said before, all art is at the edge. No matter what you're doing, whether it's trying to get a job and go in there and impress somebody, do not come in there with your suit, your khaki slacks, your tie, your resume all you know, filled out. They're just going to stand out and look for keywords. Go in there with an amazing story about yourself, something that's true for you. So if you're willing to do that, it doesn't guarantee you're going to succeed. You may fail over and over with this original thinking, but you will evolve. Keep in mind, the key to evolving as a person or a business isn't the survival of the fittest. That's a misconception. It's about failure. The way you grow and succeed is by failing over and over. Otherwise, you don't know what works. One of my great mentors um, was in the software business for years, and he had a fellow in his department who for nine months had successful project after successful project after successful project. This is a true story. Made millions for the company. He called the person in and said, I see here that I'm looking at what you've done. You have, I mean, you, you're phenomenally successful. 100 for 100 is what you're batting here. If I don't see you fail in the next six months, I'm going to have to let you go. <laughs> Brilliant guy. Because he knew that as great as this guy was, until he really started pushing himself to the edge and seeing some failures, you would never see his true greatness. The next nine months, the guy's output was phenomenal. Yes, there were failures there, but what he actually accomplished was brilliant, brilliant work that we never would have seen from him otherwise. So your brain, you have to get over this fear and resistance that your brain is trying to protect you, your friends, as good-hearted as they are, are trying to protect you from being different, from separating yourself from your, your family, your tribe as I like to call it. The third is genius and failure, and these two tie in together. We're all geniuses, so if you look at the Jerry Weintraubs of the world, I just told you that story, any one of us could have thought about that. Any one of us could have figured out, why don't we just remove some chairs and therefore the theater is full. I could give you story after story after story about this. So when you, if you, whether you want to be the CEO of a company or whether you want to be continuously employable, and don't think about that as any one company, but the kind of person that if, you're, if, you're, if there are layoffs in the company or you're trying to get a job, you're the one person that says, hey, we just went out of business or we're losing some people, but you got to hire Tom or Joanne or Jennifer, you know, you want to be that person. It comes from original thinking. It comes from that person 
who's always trying to come up with something resourceful and being creative and challenging that status quo. And you will only do that if you're not afraid to be humiliated. The minute you stand out from the crowd, the minute you stand up for anything you believe in, you will be criticized. But I can tell you this, the minute you don't, and that's just one step inside the line, you're beige. You're invisible. There is no value in being very good. There is no value in following the rules perfectly. You're invisible. You're a cog in the machinery. You have to take it to the edge. Now, again, keep in mind, if Budweiser came out with Raging Bitch, that would be a little odd. Okay? That is not the